A very good evening aspirants. I welcome you all to the Hindu daily news analysis brought to you by Shankar AS Academy. Today I am going to cover important news articles from the Hindu newspapers dated 18th and 19th of June 2023. Displayed here are the list of news articles that we will be discussing today. You can go through it. At the end of the video we will also have prelims practice question discussions. So try to watch the entire video and a kind request to you all those who have not yet subscribe to our YouTube channel do subscribe and hit the bell icon button so that you will get regular notifications about our future current affairs videos. Now let us get into our first news article discussion. Now take a look at this news article it says that the indigenously developed TAPAS 201 UAV that is unmanned aerial vehicle has achieved a major milestone. See recently the defense research development organization that is DRDO and the Indian Navy have successfully demonstrated transferring of command and control capabilities of TAPAS UAV. See during demonstration the UAV was initially controlled and commanded from a distant ground station and later the command and control were transferred to the INS Subhadra which is a patrol vessel of Indian Navy that was present at 148 km from Karwar Naval Base. So the transferring of command and control capabilities is one of the major milestones achieved by TAPAS 201 UAV. And this is about the news article given here. Now in this context let us learn some points about TAPAS UAV. Now first of all let us see what is an UAV. See unmanned aerial vehicles which is in short called as UAV are a class of aircrafts that can fly without the onboard presence of pilots. The UAVs just consist of aircraft components sensor payloads and a ground control station. The UAV can be controlled by onboard electronic equipment or through control equipment from the ground. See when UAV is remotely controlled from ground it is called remotely piloted vehicle or RPV and it requires reliable wireless communication for control. Okay. See UAVs are used for observation and tactical planning. They can perform pre-programmed flight plans and enables operational use in daylight or darkness. This is a basic about unmanned aerial vehicles or UAV. Now coming to TAPAS 201 UAV. See the TAPAS 201 UAV has been designed and developed by the Bangalore based aeronautical development establishment. Note that the TAPAS 201 is the medium altitude long endurance UAV. Here medium altitude long endurance UAVs refers to the UAVs which can operate for an extended period of time at medium altitude. Currently TAPAS 201 have an operating altitude of about 30,000 feet and it has an endurance of 24 hours with electro optical and synthetic aperture radar payloads. Now that the TAPAS UAV has a range of about 250 kilometers. It can carry a variety of payloads up to a maximum of 350 kgs. Now talking about the features of TAPAS UAV, see TAPAS 201 is a multi-mission UAV. It is capable to carry different combination of payloads like medium range and long range electro optic surveillance systems, then synthetic aperture radars, electronic intelligence, communication intelligence and situational awareness payloads. See using these payloads the TAPAS UAV can perform various missions during day and night times. The TAPAS UAV can carry out surveillance and reconnaissance roles. Apart from this. It can also acquire real time high quality pictures and signal intelligence from fields of concern at medium to long ranges. Okay. And that's all regarding this discussion. In this discussion we saw about what is an UAV. Then we saw about TAPAS 201 unmanned aerial vehicle. And we saw about the features of TAPAS 201 UAV. See this topic is very much important for your prelims exam. So make note of each and every points that we discussed. Now with these key points in mind let us move on to the next news article discussion. Now take a look at this news article. This news article is taken from yesterday's newspaper. It talks about a recent study conducted in India. The study found that a large number of people in India have diabetes or they are at risk of getting diabetes. The study found that about 11% of India's population has diabetes. Additionally, 15.3% of the population is in the pre-diabetic stage. Apart from this, the article talks about the serious implications of this diabetes and also it suggests the way forward to address the diabetes problem. So in this discussion, we will understand the points provided in this news article. 
Now, before getting into discussion, the syllabus relevant to this topic is given here. You can go through it. Now, first, we will see a small background about the diabetes. See, diabetes is a medical condition in which our body has trouble in regulating its blood sugar levels. Now, how does diabetes happen? See, normally, our bodies break down the food we eat into sugar, that is glucose. The glucose in turn is used as a source of energy by our body. But in diabetes condition, there is a problem with insulin. See, insulin is basically a hormone that helps regulate blood sugar levels. So, if you have problem in insulin, then we get diabetes. Actually, there are two types of diabetes. They are type 1 and type 2 diabetes. In type 1 diabetes, the body doesn't produce enough insulin. This condition is usually common in childhood or adolescents. In type 2 diabetes, the body doesn't use insulin properly. And this type 2 is more common in adults and often related to unhealthy lifestyle choices. So this is about the types of diabetes. So if a person have diabetes, the blood sugar levels become too high. Therefore, it can lead to various health problems. Okay. So this is the basic about diabetes. Now we will see what the article says. See recently a study was conducted in India to understand metabolic factors and their impact on health. The study was done over a long period from 2008 to 2020. The study covered different parts of the country. The researchers visited people's homes and spoke to them about their health. They found that a large number of people in India having diabetes or they are at risk of getting diabetes. Now let's understand the numbers. See the study estimated that about 11% of the population in India have diabetes. Now if we consider the entire population of India which is about 1.3 billion people, 11% of that is very big number. It means that around 101.3 million people in India have diabetes. Not only that, but the study also found that 15.3% of the country's population is in the pre-diabetic stage. Here pre-diabetes means that a person's blood sugar levels are higher than normal but not high enough to be called diabetes. Now if we consider the entire population again, 15.3% of 1.3 billion means Around 136 million people in India are at risk of developing diabetes. See, these numbers are really worrisome and many people are concerned about the situation. Besides this, the study also found something surprising. See, many people thought that diabetes was more common in big cities. But the study showed that it is also growing in smaller towns and rural areas. For example, let us see the case of Kerala. We know Kerala is top among the states with better social and development indicators. But in Kerala, the prevalence of diabetes in rural areas is higher than that in urban areas. This means that we need to pay attention to the health of people living in smaller towns and rural areas. And it is important for everyone to have access to proper healthcare facilities and regular screenings to detect diabetes early. See, we know that diabetes is a serious condition that can lead to many complications like heart disease, kidney problems, blindness and even amputations that is cutting of a limb. So it is important to prevent these complications and also to stop pre-diabetes from progressing to diabetes. Now what we can do to control the rising number of diabetes cases? See there is a good news. The good news is that we have the power to prevent or control diabetes through lifestyle changes. By making simple changes like eating a healthy diet, then doing regular exercise and getting checkups. See, by doing these activities, we can keep our blood sugar levels under control. Thereby, we can reduce the chances of developing diabetes. Hence, it is important to spread awareness about these lifestyle changes and it is important to encourage everyone to follow. So, we can say that the study has given us valuable information about the prevalence of diabetes in India. Now, going forward, researchers have to continue to study the incidence of diabetes and its impact on people's lives. We should also expand the study to include more regions of the country. Also, it is crucial for the government, healthcare professionals and the community to work together in a public-private partnership to tackle the problem of diabetes effectively. See, by taking these steps, we can make a positive difference in the lives of millions of people and we can reduce the burden of diabetes in our country. Okay, and that's all regarding this discussion. In this discussion, we saw about diabetes. Then we saw about the recent study conducted in India and the study found that a large number of people have diabetes and they are at risk of getting diabetes. And finally, we saw some points about 
how to control diabetes cases now with these points in mind let us move on to the next news article discussion now look at this science page article this article is taken from yesterday's newspaper it talks about monkeypox see last month the world health organization declared that the global health emergency for monkeypox virus outbreak is over further the article says that even though the cumulative cases across the world continue to decline there has been an increase in reported cases from some countries particularly in southeast asia and western pacific region okay this is the background of the article given here now in this discussion let us understand few important points mentioned in this news article now let us start with monkeypox see monkeypox is a zoonotic virus that can infect humans as well as other animals including rodents and other primate species the virus belongs to the same family of viruses that causes smallpox the symptoms of monkeypox is similar to those seen in smallpox patients despite the symptoms monkeypox is less contagious and less severe than smallpox now talking about the transmission monkeypox can be transmitted between humans through close contact and exposure to infected bodily fluids or lesions sexual contact is also believed to contribute to the spread of monkeypox particularly among certain demographics for example people with multiple sex partners are more vulnerable in getting monkeypox disease okay this is a brief about monkeypox now with this basics let us understand the points provided in the news article see until early 2022 monkeypox was a rare infection that was predominantly restricted to some countries in africa but later it began to spread to countries like europe and north america where such disease was unknown according to world health organization over 80000 cases of monkeypox have been reported to date since january 2022 including 146 deaths the significant impacts observed in southeast asia and western pacific region apart from this new cases have been reported in countries like china sri lanka thailand taiwan pakistan and japan in addition to this several cases have a travel history to the middle east as well so this is really a worrying fact because the disease is potentially expanding its reach through an undetected spread we really don't know the exact source of transmission and it is also posing a new challenge in its containment efforts So the news article here mentions few suggestions towards containment efforts. Now we will say them one by one. See the first suggestion is to improve the reporting mechanisms. See in many places there were challenges in accurately capturing and documenting monkeypox cases. This in turn creates an illusion that there is no or minimal cases in those regions. So the reporting mechanism should be improved to know the ground reality. Secondly, genomic data from developing countries should be included. The genomic surveillance of the monkeypox pathogen allows us for contact tracing and monitoring of its evolution. So such data are very important in this era of highly globalized world. And thirdly, we should be prepared for future challenges by taking proactive measures to curb monkeypox infections and to protect vulnerable populations. Okay? And that's all regarding this discussion. In this discussion we saw about monkeypox infection, then we saw about the transmission of monkeypox then we saw some data about monkey fox infection in the world and finally we saw some points about how to contain monkey fox spread see this topic is very much important for your both prelims and mains so make note of each and every points that we discussed now with these key points in mind let us move on to the next news article discussion now look at this news article here this news article highlights the efforts of b muthuchandra rao who is a puppetry artist from tamil nadu See Muthuchandra Rao has been invited to perform at an event in the United States. This is about the news. Now in this context we we'll learn about puppetry. See puppetry is an ancient art form that involves using puppets to tell stories and entertain audiences. The term puppet is derived from the Latin word puppa meaning a doll. Know that India is said to be the home of the puppet. The earliest reference to the art of puppetry is found in the Tamil classic Silapadigaram which was written around 1st or 2nd century BC so we can say that puppetry must have been originated in India more than 500 years before Christ now we will see about different types of puppetry now first let's take string puppets see string puppets have jointed limbs and they are controlled by strings 
The examples of string puppets include Kathputli of Rajasthan, Kundai of Odisha, Gombayatta of Karnataka, Bommalattam of Tamil Nadu. Okay, these are some of the classical examples of string puppets. Then the second type is shadow puppets. See, shadow puppets are flat figures made of translucent leather. The puppets create shadows when passed against a screen, and the shadows are created using a light source behind the puppet. The examples of shadow puppets include Togalu Gombayatta of Karnataka, Tolu Bommalatta of Andhra Pradesh, and Ramana Chaya of Odisha. Okay, this is all about shadow puppets. Then the third type is rod puppets. See, rod puppets are supported and manipulated by rods, and the rods are placed below the puppet. So, using the rods, the puppets are manipulated. The examples of rod puppets include Putul Nauch of West Bengal, Orissa rod puppets of Odisha, and Yam Puri of Bihar. And finally, we have glove puppets. See, glove puppets have a head and two hands emerging from below the neck. Glove puppets have a head made of paper mesh, cloth, or wood. They are controlled by puppeter's hand inside the puppet. The examples of glow puppets include Pavakutu of Kerala, glow puppets from Uttar Pradesh, Orissa, and West Bengal. See, each type of this puppetry has their own unique characteristics and regional variations, and they were integral part of Indian cultural for centuries. See, it is an important topic for prelims, so make a note of the names and respective states and revise consistently. This would be very helpful for your prelims. And that's all regarding this discussion. In this discussion, we saw about what are puppets. Then we saw about the four types of puppets. As we saw, there are string puppets, shadow puppets, rod puppets, and glow puppets. So make note of each and every points that we discussed. Now, with these points in mind, let us move on to the next news article discussion. Now, take a look at this news article. According to the news article, the Gandhi Peace Prize for 2021 will be conferred on Geeta Press. Which is based in Gorakhpur, Uttar Pradesh. See, Geeta Press completes 100 years of its establishment in 2023. Note that Geeta Press is one of the largest publishers of religious texts like the Bhagavad Gita, the Ramayana, and the Upanishads. This is about the news article given here. Now, in this context, let us understand about the Gandhi Peace Prize. See, Gandhi Peace Prize is an annual award which was instituted by the government of India. In 1995, the award was instituted during the commemoration of 125th birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi. The award is given to those who involved in social, economic, and political transformations through non-violence. Okay, now talking about the eligibility, see the Gandhi Peace Prize can be given to individuals, associations, institutions, or organizations. The prize can also be divided between two persons or institutions. If the jury considers them as equally deserving for recognition in a given year, remember the Gandhi Peace Prize is open to all persons regardless of nationality, creed, race, or sex. Now talking about the prize, see the award carries an amount of rupees one crore. Apart from money, a citation in a scroll and a play cash reward was conferred to the eligible persons. Further, the prize also consists of an exquisite traditional handicraft or handloom items. Okay, this is about the prize. Now, talking about the selection committee, see the persons or organizations are selected by a jury consists of five members. It consists of the Prime Minister of India who would chair the jury. Apart from Prime Minister, the jury also consists of the Chief Justice of India, Leader of Opposition, and two other eminent persons. And note that the members of jury shall be appointed for a period of three years. After three years, the two other eminent persons shall retire. And note that the retiring person shall be eligible for reappointment. And the decision of the jury shall be by consensus. Okay, this is all about Gandhi Peace Prize. See the list of previous award winners is displayed here. You can pass the video and go through it. And that's all regarding this discussion. In this discussion, we saw about Gandhi Peace Prize. Then we saw about the eligibility. Then we saw about the price details, and finally we saw some points about the selection committee. Now, with these key points in mind, let us move on to the next part of the news article discussion. That is to discuss preliminary practice questions. Now, look at the first question here. This question is about tapas B H two not one. Here, four options are given. We have to find which of the options best describes the term tapas B H two not one. 
ஆப்ஷன் ஏ இட் இஸ் அன் காம்பேட் ஏரியல் வெஹிக்கல் டெவலப் டு கேரி அவுட் சர்ஜிக்கல் ஸ்ட்ரைக்ஸ் ஆப்ஷன் பி இட் இஸ் அன் அன்மேன்ட் ஏரியல் வெஹிக்கல் டெவலப் டு கேரி அவுட் இன்டெலிஜென்ஸ் சர்வைலன்ஸ் அண்ட் ரெக்கனைசன்ஸ் ரோல்ஸ் ஃபார் த ஆம்ட் ஃபோர்சஸ் ஆப்ஷன் சி இட் இஸ் அன் ஆன்டி பேலிஸ்டிக் மிசைல் டெவலப்டு பை இந்தியா அண்ட் ஃப்ரான்ஸ் ஆப்ஷன் டி இட் இஸ் அன் இண்டெலிஜனஸ் சப்சோனிக் க்ரூஸ் மிசைல் டெவலப்டு பை டிஆர்டிஓ ஃபார் த ஆம்ட் ஃபோர்சஸ் As we saw in the discussion, the PAS BH-201 is an unmanned aerial vehicle. So the correct answer here is option B. It is an unmanned aerial vehicle developed to carry out intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance roles for the armed forces. Moving on, let's take up the second question. This question is regarding Gandhi Peace Prize. Here three statements are given. We have to find how many of the statements are correct. Now look at the first statement. Gandhi Peace Prize is an annual award instituted by the government of India in 1995. See this statement is correct. As we saw in the discussion, Gandhi Peace Prize is an annual award and it was instituted in 1995. Now look at the second statement. The award is open to all persons regardless of nationality, race, language, caste, creed or sex. See this statement is also correct. As we saw in the discussion, the Gandhi Peace Prize is open to all persons regardless of nationality, race, language, caste creed or sex so second statement is correct now coming to the third statement the gandhi peace prize for the year 2020 was conferred on bangabandhu sheik mujibur rahman see this statement is also correct the 2020 gandhi peace prize was conferred on sheik mujibur rahman here all the three statements are correct so the correct answer for the question is option c all three and this is the quiz question for you today i will post this quiz question in your community section try to answer it and the answer for the quiz question is posted in the comment section of the quiz question itself you can verify it and displayed here is the main question for you today go through the question write your answers and post it in the comment section with this we have come to the end of the video if you like our analysis please like comment and share and don't forget to subscribe to shankar ai's academy youtube channel now thank you for listening